Hi guys, um, I've been asked a lot to show you again how I make my custom slip covers uh, because I don't use an A4 printer anymore, I use an A3 printer. This way I save a bit of um, paper because I don't use two bits of A4 paper and print them together. I use just one A3 sheet, cut it out and then simply just glue it. Um, I'll quickly go into the Photoshop part of it because a lot of people ask about the Photoshop part. It's not much to tell you because you have to use your own designs. Um, you have to use your own layouts and basically your your own images. Um, I can't really tell you about where to get your images from. Um, but this, what you can see here, is just a, a simple cover that I've made for the Incredible Hulk. Um, these lines that you see um, on the the cover is just my grid lines, my ruler lines for where I'm going to mark things for in the middle. Um, so if you really want a uniform set of covers, then it's best to get these kind of lines in. Uh, I've got all different templates for all different kind of covers that I do. This one's for a Marvel cover, so these lines are um, they're relevant to me, but not to you. So that's why there's not much I can tell you about making a custom cover. All I'm going to really tell you about is how you're going to print it. Um, this here is a full size, so you've got two spines. You've got the main spine, which is this one. Uh, you've got the secondary spine, which is this one, which will be at the back. But again, you can display them however you want. I've just done a red one and a green one to differentiate. There's the front and there's the back, simple as that. And this part is always pretty important because if you don't have a, a part here, you've got nothing to glue. So I've made it pretty clear. Glue here, that's it. So this is what you print out. Now, the image size I've got here, again, this is just my size. You can do whatever size you want. Um, 3731 width by 2020 height, resolution 300, um, always the same for all these covers that I do for my slip covers. Um, you can make it slightly wider, and I'm talking millimetres if you really want to slip your covers into a, a steelbook. Uh, sometimes this is enough, if you don't glue it too tight, then it will slip all over a steelbook as well, if you collect steelbooks, I don't know. Um, so that's, that's basically it for that one. Um, when I print this out, um, I use my own colour calibration as well. So what hopefully I see there comes out in the print as well. So um, I'm hoping that it comes out as it should. Okay, this is it printed out. Um, it's done it pretty well. Uh, this is, um, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to, for anybody who wants it, I'll, I'll post a link um, or there's, there'll be a way to get in touch with me if you want a template. For, for this, um, again, you're going to have to do your own measurements for for the covers that you're wanting. Uh, I do have, um, this is a UK cover, I forgot to mention before, this is a UK size cover. Uh, I've also got a US size slip cover as well that, that I've got a template for because obviously there's US sized uh, Blu-rays out there that, are, that I make slip covers for as well. So there's two, there was two available, if you want them, contact me. Um, I'll maybe try and leave a link somewhere where I can put the actual file and leave it in the link in the description if it's there. If it's not there, just contact me uh, and I'll, I'll be able to send it to you. So this paper that I'm using, I've got a couple of examples here. The paper that I'm using is a gloss paper. Um, this is it here. <clears throat> so it's black diamond that I use, 260G uh, A3 sheets, uh, and it's 50 sheets you get. I think this was 20, 22 pound or something, 23 pound. Uh, this is good quality stuff, uh, the black diamond. I bought a few A3 gloss papers in the past and they just didn't quite cut it and this paper is pretty thick so when you actually fold it it stays where it is uh, and it prints out pretty well um, this paper here let's move this to the side a second this paper here it's strange because this paper it prints out better on this paper the A3 card because uh, it's not glossy this, here's an example this isn't mine but this is an example of just kind of a matte card finish of a, a blu-ray Again, this isn't mine. Um, that's what the that's what it tends to look like. My problem with these are, as soon as you bend it, the spine, the bends, they just crease into white, and, and all the ink comes off. That's my problem with this card. Whereas this one, when it's bent, there's no. Uh, you'll see it when I bend when I bend it. There's no bad creases, and the ink stays where it is, even when you fold it very tightly. Um, so that's a good thing about that paper. Sad about that one because it prints really well. It prints almost like this, and this is a retail cover. So it prints almost like a retail cover. I just haven't perfected the 
uh, the bending of the spines. If anybody's getting any tips, you can let me know. Uh, and this is the black diamond stuff, so it's good quality, nice and thick stuff that I use. Uh, put that to the side. Now, before I actually cut this and glue it, um, this is a normal Marvel cover. Obviously, I don't have hollow foil paper, uh, and I don't have a printer that can do this kind of stuff. This is retail quality, obviously. Um, the, the effect that I'm going for is just basically a uniform um, cover for Marvel. Uh, again, you can do this for any cover you want. So the covers are not going to look like this, they never will. Um, but they'll, they'll still look okay. Um, this is the glue that I use. So I'll be, I'll be, gluing, I'll be cutting this and gluing it uh, behind the scenes because there's no point in you looking at all of this. So this is the glue that I use. UHU, it's pretty cheap and you get quite a lot in it. I used to buy the little small super glue uh, stuff and it lasted maybe three or four covers, but this lasts quite a bit. So that's good. And I don't just cut with scissors, I cut fine with the pen and obviously a ruler as well. So it's it's nice and neat. And always use a mat so you don't get any marks anywhere. So I'll go away and cut this, I'll glue it and I'll see how it looks. So I'll be back soon. Okay, that's it cut. So I'm just gonna have to start the bending and then I'll do the gluing. So back again. Okay, just a few quick notes before I glue it together, guys. Uh, always make sure your bends are really tight, and like I said, it doesn't take anything off the, the ink if you're using it properly. Um, always make sure it lines up. Use your Blu-ray cover, slide it inside just to make sure it all nice and fits and nice. If you are doing what I do and put a little glue mark here, make sure that when you're bending it, you don't see any of the white line coming from to this side. Always keep the white line to that side. So a bit of the, the image is going across the back there. You can always carry the image over if that's easier for you. The only problem with that is when you're coming to bend it, um, it's hard to tell where the line's supposed to be. So always always make sure you, you check that first. This is easy because it's differentiating the color from there to there. Easy easy lines, same with this part as well. You're differ differentiating the color from there to there. So you've got an easy line gauge to go by. Sometimes you don't have that with your slip covers. Um, I use my ruler as well to make a more straight line. You might want to do the same. It's up to you. Uh, so I'll glue it just now and I'll be back again. Okay, that's it done. Uh, so it's all glued together. Now the gluing for me is the worst part. Some people enjoy gluing, I hate glue. Uh, I always get shaky hands when I come to glue things, but it worked out pretty well this time. So it's all glued together. So it's this spine that's glued to the back. So that's fine. So stand up. There we go. So there's the spine there. It actually looks pretty good to be honest. So you've got a green side and a, a red side. So there's the, that's the back spine. There's the front. And then there's the, the your usual spine. And you come around to the back. And you get a spit as well, so. And this is, this is how secure it is really. So it's nice and tight. Take that off. And it just shows you how sturdy the card is. It's a good card and it stands nicely on its own as well. So it's good, good solid card. Just like a, slip, a standard slip cover. It's running about the same thickness as well. Uh, and that's basically how you make a custom blurry slip cover. Again, all the information that I have will go in the description below. Um, no point in putting my, print, uh, my printer description because you all have your own printers. I use a Brother A3 printer. It's just a stand, bog standard Brother printer that you can get in any store. It's not a professional printer. It's a, it's a pretty good one. It's not a basic one. Uh, it's an advanced home inkjet printer. Nothing fancy, nothing big and fancy about it. Uh, and that's it, guys. So that's my custom Blu-ray slipcover and how to do it. Any more questions, leave me some comments down below. Um, and like I said, if I miss anything out, just tell me what I've missed out and I'll, I'll try and answer it as best I can. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.